If you're self-publishing a children's book, there might be a specific scenario that you need to pay closest attention to, and that is image rights and licensing. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of misunderstandings when it comes to doing self-publishing in children's books and the image rights and licensing. So I'm going to give a pretty good overview to the whole process. You're going to want to make sure that you stay tuned to today's podcast. What's happening? It's Dale here, and I'm just tickled to death. You took a little bit of time out your day to spend a little bit of time with me to talk about my favorite thing in self-publishing. Normally, I have a sponsor spot, but you know, this month I decided I would go and give back to somebody who's been doing some amazing things in the community for the past few years. Friend's name is Evan Gow, and he runs a fantastic app that's called Story Origin. So this is a platform where you find reviewers, increase your sales, and build your email list with other authors just like you. Now, Story Origin's launching out of free open beta. So it used to be open for free because he was getting all the data and feedback and trying to tweak things. It's been running to help authors build their mailing lists, find reviewers, and run cross promos with other authors. Now it is premium. Yes, that's right. Evan's got to pay his bills, and I think you're going to find it's well worth it. You can access all these features and more for only $10 per month. Visit storyoriginapp.com for more details. No, this is not an affiliate link. No, this is not a sponsored post. Uh, I really believe Evan's just a solid stand-up guy that has an amazing product, and I'm doing that without getting any compensation whatsoever. All right, if you're a children's book author that's publishing books without images, chances are very likely you could probably skip this podcast. It sounds crazy. You're probably like, no, I'm a children's book author. I don't put any images. You're good to go. But I find a vast majority of people that actually do children's books will have some sort of images, graphics, or illustrations in it. And I know for me, that's what I do. So if you're a children's book author with images in your publications, today's podcast is aimed at you. Now, there's three things that we need to address how we're doing the images inside the kids' books. Now... Before I get too deep into things, I want to let you know that I'm not giving you legal advice. I'm just giving you information that's more for entertainment purposes. This means that before you do anything, make sure you read the fine print. And if you have to, talk with a business attorney about how it works for you and your business. Okay, now that that's out the way, let's go ahead and talk about the very first model. Do it yourself. There's a lot of you out there that are probably artistic want to tap into that and publish children's books. This is probably the best way to do it. If you're artistic and you've got all of the software that you need to actually put it into an ebook or print book, then that's it. You own 100% of your stuff. There's no ands, ifs, or buts unless, of course, you go and you sell that image to somebody else or someone hires you to do an image. That's their rights. That's their property. Otherwise, the DIY method is probably the best. It does require a little bit of work, especially if you are not used to, for instance, drawing something, scanning it, and putting it on online. Or, for that matter, drawing it on your computer and then putting it online. All right, so the next option is going to be, of course, hiring out. This is something that I've been advocating for a long time. I say, hire out. If you don't know how to do it, hire out. If you don't have enough time, hire out. So in this particular instance, you can hire out some different freelance artists. Now, you're probably saying, though, okay, where do I find them? Good question. When you're hiring out, you can look at places like Fiverr, Upwork. I'm sure there's other graphic design websites. Uh, Vexels is another one that pops up off the top of my head that you can actually hire them to do specific graphics for you. This really depends, your rights for the images and the licensing is going to depend on what it says on that specific platform. So for Fiverr, when somebody completes the gig and you have approved it and they've been paid, you own it lock, stock, and barrel. That artist no longer has rights to that image. So as soon as that transaction's made, you've paid them, all right, you've got the image, it's all set, it's yours. You could do whatever you want to with it. 
unless the gig says something otherwise. Sometimes it'll say for commercial use, it's more expensive. So pay attention to that fine print over on Fiverr. That's a great example right there. So with most instances, with a lot of platforms, when you hire out, you should own it 100%, like no limitations. There might be, there might be, now I don't know of a specific platform, that's why I'm saying there might be a specific platform that might require attribution. Okay, so maybe Vexels is. I, I could could be off. Sorry, Jero, if I'm if I'm butchering this. Um, any rate, uh, read the fine print. Make sure that if there's attribution required, that you do that. Now you're probably saying, "What's attribution?" That means just giving credit where credits due. So let's say, for instance, I hire Jero from Vexels to go ahead and do an image, and maybe they require. I'm saying maybe. I'm not sure for. I'm not 100% certain, um, but I hire them and maybe they say, okay, attribution is required. I'd go inside my copyright page and I'd make sure that I would give the attribution there. Jero at Vexels provided the images for this book. All rights reserved, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, the third way to do things. Now, this is my preferred avenue. This is the avenue that I use. It's buying the images, buy the licensing. It's a bit more tricky. So very first thing, right out the gate, Creative Commons. Creative Commons is essentially meaning that it's open to the public. It's like the public domain for images, it essentially is. There's usually no attribution required. If you use the image, you can go ahead. So a very popular website called pixabay.com Highly recommend you go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, Pixabay is Creative Commons with no attribution required. Pretty nice, right? But then we segue over to more premium sites where there's royalty-free images. Now, royalty-free images means that you purchase the licensing or the rights for this to not have to worry about paying more into it by using that image. Some sites, in fact, quite a few of the premium sites have two models typically available, sometimes three if we say the free versions available. But you got a standard model. With the standard model license, they usually require some type of alteration. So if you get the image, they're like, hey, Use the image, it's totally cool, but we want you to change it so it's a little bit more unique and original to you. Easy enough. What they don't want typically is raw usage of it. So let's just say, for instance, I found an image that I really liked and I made it my front cover. I love this thing. And if I didn't change a single thing about it, I'm now violating that licensing. So if for some reason the original creator sees that, they can take me to court sue me over that. But if you've done some alteration, you're good to go. Keep in mind, look into attribution. If you have to give credit where credit's due, do that. Now, some instances, folks, every now and then you go, okay, what if I never found anything about attribution? Do I need to do anything? Do I not need to do anything? To err on the side of caution, I would say, just give attribution if you can. Just give it. Um, if there's nothing in their contract that states that need, need to be listed on the front cover or as a contributor to your publication, copyright page works just fine. Just slip them right into there. Premium licenses. Now, these this is typically when the royalty-free image is a, at a higher premium. Why? Because usually there's no catch. You can get the licensing without having to change the image if you want, Okay. There might be attribution. So you've got that standard license and you got the premium license. They might call it something different based on the platform that you go to. Nonetheless, you get the idea. So here's the thing with standard versus premium. Standard, some licenses, for instance, depositphotos.com is uh, one of my preferred avenues and I'll share a little bit about them later on. You can do the standard license, but you're limited on the number of sales that you make on that specific license itself. That makes sense? 
hopefully makes sense. You're saying as you're in your workout going, yeah, that makes sense. Totally, Dale. But with the premium one, there's no limits on the actual sales. So always go through each individual website, figure out what it is. Boy, folks, today is just one of those episodes that's going to be a lot shorter than usual. You're probably used to me bloviating for about 20 minutes at a time, and I appreciate you actually listening in. But today is going to be a shorter episode. I felt it was very important that we go ahead and address this issue of image rights and licensing. Before we start to wrap things up, I want to give a big special thanks to each and every single one of you that listen or watch me over on YouTube. Uh, We just hit 1,000 subscribers over on the podcast on YouTube. If you haven't gone there yet, go to daylinks.com slash YouTube podcast. Here's the news. We are permanently moving over to YouTube. We are usually recording a lot of this on Twitch. In fact, I'm doing that right now, right this second over on Twitch. But in about another four weeks, we're going to move over permanently over to the YouTube podcast location. It's going to be much better for everybody involved. So make sure that you go on over and join us, become part of the 2K sub club. When you head over to dailinks.com slash YouTube podcast. Final tips. When it comes to DIY images, there's going to be a steep learning curve. If you're doing it yourself, chances are very likely you might be artistic, but maybe you don't have the proper know-how for scanning it or maybe even using, let's say, a, an iPad to draw out your stuff. Um, but as soon as you get past the learning phase, it will become easier and you should be able to go a lot faster from there. Worst case scenario, if you're doing it yourself, let's say for instance, you draw really, really well, pen and paper, got it out. I can do some amazing drawings. This is fantastic. And then you get to the point of, oh, I don't have the technology. Hire out, find somebody over on Fiverr or on Upwork, someone that can be able to scan that and provide it to you in the necessary file that you need for publishing your book. Hiring out folks, hiring out equals less stress. I know some of you are probably trying to pinch your pennies and saying, I don't want to be spending money though, Dale, but it's an investment. I want you to look at it that way. Uh, I've already mentioned one of the platforms in Fiverr. It's my preferred platform when it comes to hiring out freelance uh, artists. So go over to dailinks.com slash Fiverr and make an order through there. Help support the channel. Also, you can get some royalty-free images. My preferred avenue is going to be deposit photos. I already mentioned them before, really like them. Uh, I had some other images and I grabbed a number of image licenses for the Grumpy Gus series I did on Twitch a while ago. Uh, You can take a look at deposit photos or selfpublishingwithdale.com slash deposit photos. They got a nice feature. If you go over, visit that link, by the way, and just sign up, they'll send you weekly emails with all of their free images. That's right. You get some royalty-free free free images that you can use. So it's like Pixabay, but on steroids. Uh, Another one that I prefer is Vexels. I already kind of gave a shout out. The nice thing is Vexels is kind of like deposit photos, but it's more image heavy or uh, graphics heavy. And on top of that part of their memberships, you're able to order a custom graphic that you would want. And that's kind of nice. So go over to dailinks.com slash vexels to take a look at that. And of course, Pixabay. Can't go wrong with that. The only issue when it comes to when you get Creative Commons works, folks, everyone is using it. All right. You go to more premium images. Not as many people are using it. So that means there's not going to be as much overlap. You're not going to go over to look at someone's kid's book and go, I saw that on Pixabay. Oh, that's in my, oh, and you're kind of crushed and going, oh, shoot. So there is that. Hey, folks, next week, we are actually going to be taking a deeper dive into self-publishing a children's book, marketing and promoting. It will definitely be a full 20-minute podcast. I definitely look forward to bloviating a little bit about that. In the meantime, subscribe or follow me on your preferred podcast platform and leave a review. I definitely love to hear from you. Till later, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale, and I will chat with you next week.